about Babylon here in these two chapters are going to happen in future. Okay, so this is a ma and main and important thing that we have to understand. What all the things are reminded or what all the things are mentioned about Babylon in these two chapters are going to happen in future. Okay, that this, I mean, doesn't happen now, but this is going to happen in future after the second coming of Jesus Christ. So now let us look into <clears throat> these chapters and what are the what are the main topics that we can see in chapter 17. The main topics and main titles that uh, we are going to look into uh, uh, about uh, chapter 17. Okay, so the first thing is the judgment of religious Babylon. The judgment of religious Babylon. So we, we won't be covering all these particular points, but we will be uh, discussing from this chapter one by one uh, in, a, in, a, in a particular method because, you know, we cannot cover all these points together. But at the same time, we will be uh, thinking and studying about, uh, I mean, some of the portions and some, some of the verses from chapter 17. So the first thing is the judgment of religious Babylon. Okay. The judgment of religious Babylon. So there is a religious Babylon and we will be studying about that. And there is a destruction of ecclesiastical Babylon, the destruction of ecclesiastical Babylon, and also the destruction of final world religion, the destruction of final world religion. We will know that, we will know about that in future. I mean, the final world religion. And the next one is the fall of unspiritual Babylon, the fall of unspiritual Babylon. And again, the doom of the great harlot, the doom of the great harlot. And the, and the last one is the mystery, the Babylon, the great. Listen, as uh, you are, while you are writing all those points, let me give you some of the, uh, simple, some of the things which, which is easy for you to understand. You know, there will be a judgment of religious Babylon. So Babylon has been grown uh, as, uh, as, uh, as a religious realm. So there is a religious Babylon and uh, uh, there will be a destruction of ecclesiastical Babylon. Ecclesiastical Babylon means, um, the ecclesia means in, in Greek, ecclesia means church. Okay, so church is the, is the English word for ecclesia of Greek. So uh, Babylon has a setup of church or religion. So the ecclesiastical Babylon also will be destroyed because it is standing as a religion, okay? And next one is the destruction of the final world religion. So this Babylonian religion uh, will become a world religion soon after. So when that happens, God will, uh, uh, God will, I mean, destroy that world religion because God is not looking for a world religion, but God is looking for a New Testament church to be prepared for his coming. When, so Jesus Christ is coming back and returning back to earth to, to receive the, the, the saints of God, the believers of God. Okay, God is not coming soon. Jesus is not coming soon to take uh, the world religions, but Jesus is coming back to, to take his own I mean, uh, people, his own New Testament church. Okay, then again, there will be the fall of unspiritual Babylon. You know, Babylon, all of a sudden, when you, when you, when you study about the Babylon, you will understand, you, you may be thinking that, okay, Babylon is a good religion. And uh, the, the, the people of Babylon are a spiritual people. But, you know, in the sight of God, Babylon, even today also, and even in the time of the Great Tribulation, Babylon will not be a spiritual Babylon. That's the reason that there will be a fall of unspiritual Babylon in those days. And also there will be a doom of the great harlot. We will study about the great harlot or the great prostitute later. So the doom of the great harlot or uh, that also will be, uh, we'll be studying. And also the mystery, Babylon, the great. What is the mystery? Uh, uh, in Malayalam it is written, Marmam Mahadiyam Babylon. Marmam Bakadiyan Mahadiyam Babylon. That also we'll be studying later. So, I will try to explain very shortly about these topics on Babylon. Okay, these are all things that are happening in relation with Babylon. 
So let me let me try to explain all those things very shortly about uh, these things about the Babylon. Okay, you know, if we go through the Bible, it's a it's a tale of two cities from Genesis to Revelation. Okay, it's a tale of two cities. There are two cities mainly focusing in throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We know that uh, uh, the the in 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 Genesis also we can see that the 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 city of Babel is there or city of Babylon is there. And even in the book of Revelation, uh, uh, John is speaking about um, the, the city of Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, okay? The, the city of Babylon in Genesis, starting with that, and the city of Jerusalem is with the city of Jerusalem ending the book of Revelation, okay? We will be studying all the portions in between this Babel, the city of Babel, and the city of Jerusalem. So in Genesis, Genesis, we see the Babel tower of the city. Okay, the tower is there. The, the, the tower of Babel is there in Genesis. Uh, that is in chapter 11, verse 4. Okay, so that is made by man. Okay, that the, the city of Babel or the tower of Babel was made by man. And all through the Bible, you can see the details of city of Jerusalem, which is made by God. So this is the difference between the, the Tower of Babel or City of Babel and the City of Jerusalem. The Tower of Babel or the City of Babel or City of Babylon is made by man. At the same time, the City of Jerusalem is made by God. Okay, we are going to look into that. You know, we know why man built the City of Babylon. Why was the people of Babel, they were making a city or making a, making a tower, making a tower of Babel. That is what we read in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4. Can you read uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 4? Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and mm -hmm. let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be de depressed, de dispersed over the face of the whole earth. Okay, so why did those people build the city of Babylon? Why did those people build the city of Babylon? Very carefully, we are going to look into those portions because without understanding all these portions, we will not study, we cannot study chapter 17, okay? So, you know, why did these people were building this city of Babylon or the Tower of Babylon? It was for themselves, right? It is clearly written there. It was for themselves. It was not for God, but it was for themselves. Okay? For their own fame, for their own fame and for their own name, not to be scattered, but to stay in one place forever, which was absolutely against the plan of God. Listen, that Bab the, 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 uh, what is that? the Tower of Babel or the city of Babel was built for themselves, for their own fame, for their own name, not to be scattered but to stay in one place forever and ever, which was absolutely against the plan of God. Okay, we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 18, what was the plan of God? Okay, in, in Genesis chapter 11 verse 4, we read about the, the plan of man, but in Genesis chapter 1 verse 18, we read what was the plan of God? What was the plan of God? Read that verse also, okay, 1 18. To rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Um, um, which one was that? One. I'm sorry. Uh, 128. 128. Yeah. That's the 128, yeah. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And, and have dom dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every li living thing that moves on the earth. Okay. What, what is the plan of God when God was creating man? Okay, man, uh, God made man and said God blessed them. It is written there, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That means to spread everywhere, to be scattered everywhere, 
right? God blessed them. Okay, after creating man, God blessed them in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, 1, verse 28. It says that God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That means to be catch scattered in different places. Okay, but remember, the city is not important, but the system of the city is important. Here, we have to understand when man was making a city, man was making a tower for themselves, but God was making everything for everyone, for everyone and for God's glory. Okay, so when we study about the, the, the city of Babylon or the nation Babylon, we have to remember one thing, that the city is not important, but the system of the city is important. So God is looking not for the city or okay god is not looking okay uh, what is the what is the speciality of jerusalem or what is the speciality of babylon or what is the speciality of pergamos or uh, thyatira or something but god is looking into the system of that city or system of of the church or system of the religion okay here we understand they said that let us make a name for ourselves let us make a name for ourselves this is the babylonian system this is the babylonian system amen so when we are thinking about this you know we have to think that when selfish agenda enter into the plans of god there comes the destruction and confusion okay there comes the destruction so when we study about uh, this uh, making the making the tower of babel we understand when the selfish agenda came in the selfish agendas enter into the plans of god god was planning another thing and the man was planning a different thing. Okay, So when these selfish things and thoughts are coming and entering into the plans of God, there comes the destruction and the confusion. Even, even in the churches today, uh, also it is happening. You know, when the selfish agendas or hidden agendas, which knowingly or unknowingly stop the spiritual growth of the churches. You know, when it comes inside the church, you know, that will stop always. The, the growth of the churches, you know, when somebody think that his name should be lifted up always, and he must be the, the prominent uh, person in the church and working hard to make it there. You know, then comes the confusion among the other people like the Tower of Babel. Okay, The people, those who are trying to make their own name higher and the people, those who are I mean, trying to working hard to get the fame and get the I mean, name and get the honor from other people. And there comes the confusion. The other people are confused and they do not, they do not know what to do. And they do not know how to move up. Move up. And they say, that, okay, why this is happening? Even, you know, in, in our churches also, in many of the churches, in Christian churches, it is happening. No, but why can't we think in this way that the, let, the, let, the, let the Lord and Lord's name be lifted up always in our churches instead of our names. Hallelujah. So let God's name, let the Lord be lifted up always. Let the name of God be lifted up always in all our churches instead of our names. And that's what uh, when Paul prayed uh, in uh, his uh, epistles that, that he said, he must increase. That means God must increase, but I must decrease. Okay. 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 That is the real spirituality. He must increase always in my life. And but I must decrease always because I want to, I mean, show Jesus and I want to, I mean, uh, express Jesus through, through my life. I mean, so I, I need to exhibit Jesus through my life. So that should be our motive. So Jesus must become more important while I become less important in public. Okay. So this is, this is the, I mean, this is the thought that which I, which came to, came into my uh, mind when I was reading this portion, you know, just, you know, Jesus must become more important. Jesus must become more important while I become less important in the public. So in, you know, in some churches, uh, people gives more preference and importance for their pastor, right? You know, some of the churches, you know, they are giving more importance and more preference for the pastor. You know, in some other churches, they are giving 
more importance for the founder of the church. Okay, there will be a founder of the church. So now some people are giving more importance for the founder of the church. And in some other churches, some people are giving more importance for the elders of the church or committee of the church or board members of the church. Of course, we must respect all these people. Respect your pastors, respect your elders, respect your, I mean, uh, committee members or board members, whatever it may be, the founder of the church, whatever it may be, whoever it may be. We have to respect all of them. And we have to, I mean, uh, honor them. Of course, we have to do that. At the same time, let our position or name be always come after the position and name of God. You know, let it be there. Let our position be there. Let your name will be there. But let those things come after the position of the name of God. Let the name of God be, I mean, uh, there. The, um, uh, let the name of God be first, I mean, before our name comes, before our position comes, and let the name and fame and glory be to the Lord Almighty God always. Amen. Hallelujah. So now we'll be discussing a little bit about the historical background of the city of Babylon. So we will be going into that portion, the historical background of the Babylon. Okay, so the historical background of the Babylon, the reason that we are including that study also in uh, this chapter 17, the reason is because, you know, without getting some ideas about the historical background of nation Babylon, it's difficult to understand the things mentioned in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. We should know something about the um, historical background of this uh, uh, nation Babylon, then only we will be uh, easily understanding what is the spiritual uh, uh, interpretation and what is the spiritual meaning uh, of uh, the things which is mentioned in chapters uh, 17 and 18. <clears throat> You can you can complete writing these points, then uh, it will be easy for you to listen whatever I explain. The historical background of Babylon. Okay, so as we study the historical background of Babylon, our motive is not to get some information about all those things, you know. Sometimes when we are studying something from the history, we may be thinking that, okay, this is, this is a good information. This is a good information about Babylon. But our motive is not that, okay? Let us know something about the historical background or some, some information about the historical background of the Babylon. At the same time, we are trying to understand how these things can influence every one of us and what is the application into our life. Okay. Why we are studying about the historical background of Babylon? We are trying to understand how these things can influence us. You know, there are many things which can influence the believer. There are many things which can influence the believer. So we are going to study how these things which is written in chapter 17 are trying to influence the believers of God and what is the application into our personal life. Okay. We know that there are many things in the world we should not enter inside a Christian. There are many things which should not enter inside a Christian and with which uh, we must keep a distance. You know? We have many things to keep a distance with and that is known as the systems of this world. And sometimes we will have to say no to many things, right? We will have to say no to many things, you know? All of the, um, you know, all of the sudden, when whenever we uh, hear something, we say yes, 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 and we are mingling with that, and we are saying okay, no problem, no problem, no problem, and compromising, and mingling with that and everything. But you know, there are something which should be kept distance. Okay, we have to keep something distance, okay, from us, and also we have to be away from some of the systems of this world. You know, we have to say no to something. Which may, which may destroy our Christian life. Now, when we study about uh, the Babylon, the Babylon always represents a kind of counterfeit religious system. 
Listen, Babylon always represent a kind of counterfeit religious system. You will understand this with more clarity as we study the history of Babylon, as we study the history of Babylon. You know, we know that in Genesis chapter 10 verses 8 to 11, we understand the city of Babylon was founded by Nimrod. Okay, can you read uh, that portion, uh, Elsa? Genesis chapter 10 verses 8 through 11. Hush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Iraq, Akkad, and Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Okay. Yeah. So we, from, from that portion, we understand the city of Babylon was founded by Nimrod. The city of Babylon was found, founded by Nimrod. The name Babel means the gate of gods. The name Babel means the gate of gods. And we know the famous tower was an idolatrous attempt by man to defy God. Okay, And when the Lord sent judgment on the, on the builders by making mankind's one language into many. Okay, So, you know, when, <clears throat> when they were trying, when the people were trying to build, a, uh, uh, build the Tower of Babel, so God was just watching that and God said, no, 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 this is not possible and we are going to do something into these people. And when, when, when God was judging those people on the, on the builders by making you know, mankind's one language, they were having only one language those days, but it became many languages. And the word Babel came to mean confusion. So they were in confusion. What to do, what to do, what to do. Okay, no, one, one builder was, I mean, one worker was saying, uh, I mean, bring some sand and the, that person will not understand the language of that person and he will bring some bricks or something. So there was a great confusion among the people, those who were living in that, in that century. So later in history, we understand Babylon became a great empire before finally falling to media, what is that media, uh, made up Persia. Okay. But from the beginning of the Imran city, hidden anti-God Babylonian influence has been seen throughout the history. You know, always throughout the, throughout the history, we understand this Babylon and the, and, the, and the system of the Babylon and the religious group of the Babylon was influencing many people, many people and many other religions. Okay? Remember, Christianity as a religion have adopted many rituals from Babylon. So when you go through the history of the Christianity from the beginning itself, we understand, I mean, Christianity as a religion have adopted many rituals from Babylon. You know, you have to think about one thing and understand one thing that always the Christianity is not at all a religion. Okay, The simple meaning of the word religion is opinion opinion but the christianity is not a not at all an opinion of any person but the christianity is a truth christianity is a truth so you cannot count christianity as a simple religion like other religions because it has a leader jesus christ and jesus christ is leading this christianity he is the leader and he is the founder of the christianity and jesus christ is showing the way for every one of us Amen. so this is the reason that we can say that you know when we adopting when we are adopting something or some rituals from the other religions or from other just like the babylonian system or the world system there comes the destruction okay so there are many rituals and many uh, celebrations which is adopted from the Babylonian religion to the Christianity. For example, um, uh, let me give you a story about uh, Nimrod. Okay, so this is actually, this is not a story, but this is actually, you know, the earlier people, they were believing and they were just believing those things. You know, Nimrod, we know that Nimrod is the founder of the, uh, the Babylonian or Babel. Okay. So that is very clear from uh, Genesis chapter 10. And you know, uh, Nimrod built the city of Babel and he married a woman called Semiramis. So Semiramis was the, uh, Semiramis was the uh, wife of uh, Nimrod. And they had a son called Tammuz. Tammuz was the name 
of the of the son of Nimrod and Semiramis. And they believe that this son, Tammuz, was born miraculously. Okay, this 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 son, Tammuz, was born miraculously. And in a in a in a winter season, winter season, uh, this son was killed after three days, he was risen. Listen, you now they had Nimrod and Sem I mean, what is the Semiramis had a, a, a son. And that's, that son was uh, uh, born miraculously. And these people were believing that the, this Tammuz, uh, Tammuz uh, was born in winter season. And this son was killed after three days and he was risen. And they used to celebrate the miraculous birth and resurrection of Tammuz in every winter season. They used to celebrate the miraculous uh, birth of, uh, I mean, Tammuz. Okay, the birth also, the resurrection, the reason of, from the death of Tammuz in every winter season. And, uh, you know, the historians are calculating this celebration exactly on December 25th by making a tree with lights and decorations. Those people on those days, they were celebrating this um, with uh, the lights and the decorations of, on, a, on a tree on December 25th. You know, in, even, even Easter also has another story behind which links to the system of Babylon. Okay, even Easter also has uh, another story, okay, which will link to the system of Babylon. So actually we do not know the exact date or month of the birth of Jesus or resurrection of Jesus, but we celebrate Christmas and uh, Easter only because Christ is born as a savior and he is resurrected one day. I mean, so we, we used to celebrate Christmas or Easter or something, it's not a, uh, according to all those uh, uh, stories or something. But we believe that any one day, one day Jesus was born and he was resurrected from the death. Okay, we believe in that. So he is the savior. And every day we are celebrating Christmas. Every day we are celebrating the Easter because we understand when Jesus is born, Jesus is born. The exact date is not clear. We do not know the exact date of the birth of Jesus or resurrection of Jesus Christ, but we know that Jesus is born and Jesus is died and Jesus is resurrected. You know, so let us understand one thing. The date has nothing to do with our salvation. The date has nothing to do with our salvation. But the day when, when we were born or born again is very much important for all of us. I mean, so let us come to the, come to the history of uh, that Babylon. You know, during the time of King Belshazzar, during the time of King Belshazzar, the maid of Persian came, uh, uh, they, they came and defeated the nation of Babylon. Okay, so this is the first thing that which happened during the time of Belshazzar. So now you, when you read uh, the book of Daniel, there are many uh, clear explanations about all those portions. Okay, so what happened to the Babylon during the time of the King Belshazzar? Okay, so the Belshazzar time, the Medo Persians came and defeated the nation of Babylon, and they shifted the capital to Pergamos. They they shifted the capital to Pergamos. Okay, so the capital of Babylon became Pergamos. The capital of Babylon became Pergamos in the time of Belshazzar the king. Okay, but in in BC 133, in BC 133. Um, uh, the Pergamos was handed over to Rome. The Pergamos was handed over to Rome means the Rome came in rule over the Pergamos and in Babylon. Okay, so Rome became the the ruling ruling uh, religion or uh, ruling uh, party of that of that nation. Okay, and in AD three hundred and twenty-two, in AD three hundred and twenty-two, the Emperor Constantine came. And he captured this place and made Christianity as a religion. These all things we already uh, mentioned and we already studied when we were studying the, the initial classes of the book of Revelation. Okay, So, you know, what happened in AD 322, Emperor Constantine came and he captured this particular place and made Christianity as a religion from this time many of the rituals and Babylonian systems were adopted to Christianity. Okay, this is the main point you have to understand. When Constantine became the emperor of Rome and he was trying to adopt all the Babylonian rituals and Roman rituals and all systems 
into the Christianity. Okay, so these things we already discussed when we were studying uh, about uh, I think seven churches, seven churches of Asia, and Asia Minor, and uh, the geographical historical background of each church, especially about the church at Pergamos. Okay, we already studied about all those things in the initial classes. Okay, so here. You know, in chapter 17, uh, you can see the description of a woman. The description of a woman is given in chapter 17, verses 1 to 6 and verse 18. Okay, chapter 17, verses 1 to 6 and 18. Uh, Elsa, you can read maybe uh, one verse, chapter uh, 17, verse 18. Chapter 17, verse 18. And the woman that you saw in, is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Hmm. Okay, so, you know, this is the description of the woman which is mentioned in chapter 17. The woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. The woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. That means the counterfeit religious leader and a political leader. Okay? There is a woman and there is a beast. Okay, so this beast is the political leader and the woman is the, I mean, uh, uh, symbolizing the counterfeit religious leader. The religious leader is there and the political leader is there, okay? Now, when we see the woman sitting on the beast, okay, when we see the woman is sitting on the beast, we may think that woman is riding the beast, woman is riding the beast. But later we will understand the beast is controlling the woman. The beast is controlling the woman. We will come to that point later. Okay, so the politics will control the religious religions later. That is the meaning of that. The woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. That means the politics is going to control the religion later. That will happen one day. Okay, and again, the woman is dressed in expensive garments. Okay, the woman is dressed in expensive garments and decorated with gold and precious stones. Decorated with gold and precious stones. Okay, That means the prosperity of Rome, which shows about the prosperity of Rome, the wealth of Rome. Okay? But, but the Bible calls the wealth as an abomination. Okay? Abomination and Dana and the wealth of Lingle Sambathan were in the Itana, Blacha the Itana, out of Paradigana. So you can see that the woman is dressed in an expensive garment and she is decorated with gold and precious stones, which speaks about the prosperity of Rome and the wealth of Rome. Okay, so, uh, so I told you already that in the history that uh, uh, during the time of uh, those emperors. It became the Rome became uh, uh, the, the yeah the, the Pergamos became the the capital city of Rome okay and it was uh, it was taken to Rome okay so now he, he, we will understand that she is holding a golden cup is that yeah she is holding a golden cup in her hand and is drank from the blood of the saints blood of the saints means many Christians were persecuted and killed by the religious leaders of Rome. Many Christians were persecuted and many were killed by the religious leaders of Rome. That is the meaning of that, that she is holding a golden cup in her hand and is drunk with the blood of the saints, blood of the Christians, blood of the people, those who were living and those who were serving God. Many Christians were persecuted and killed by the religious leaders of Rome. Okay, and again, in, in verse 5, verse 5, it is written, and on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. Marmam, Bakhadiya, Babylon, Veshya Marudaya, Mlechadagurudaya, Madhava, Endur Pere, Avrada Nettil, Eldi Tunda. So it is written that on her forehead she wears a special name. It is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. That means she is a harlot or prostitute. Who? Babylon is counted as, as a woman here. As a woman, Babylon is counted as a woman here. And it says that she is a harlot or she is a 
prostitute. Okay, that means Satan or Antichrist will use the apostate religious system to accomplish his own plans. That means Satan will try to use this Babylon or to use this country to, to apostate the religious system to accomplish his own plans. He will have many plans and he will take away many of the Christian people in the end time to, to, to his, uh, for us as his followers. Okay, that's the meaning of that. And, you know, throughout the history, the political system have used the religious bodies to function their political agendas. Okay. Uh, there are many examples. I don't want to explain all those things uh, in this class because, you know, uh, there are many things to explain. Now, all over the uh, countries we have to think about and study, the history says that always the political systems have used the religious bodies. That means the political leaders are getting uh, alliance with uh, the religious leaders and they are communicating many things and they are taking some decisions which will destroy the Christian church. Okay, that happens even today also. You know, always the political system, political leaders and their system is using the religious bodies and religious people, religious leaders to function their own agendas. Okay, at the same time, church history reveals that religious groups have used politics, politics to achieve their purposes. I mean, you know, when political leaders are friendly with religion, it is usually a sign that they want to make use of the religious influence and then destroy it. Now, when, when political leaders are becoming friendly with the religious leaders, there is no doubt at all, there is no doubt at all that they want to make use of the religion and they are influencing the religious people to destroy the Christianity. They are using their power, they are using their influence, men, and they are trying to destroy the Christianity. Okay, so that is happening even today also. And the same thing will happen during the time of the Great Tribulation afterwards. But remember, the New Testament church is most influential in the world when it has maintained a separated position. So remember one thing, the Christian church, the New Testament church is always separate. It is always separate. You know, we have nothing to do with the, the worldly system. We have nothing to do with the, the Babylonian as religious system, the Roman religion system, because we are the separated people of God. We are selected by God and we are the Christians, those who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, remember that, I mean, I mean, the church can influence the world, okay, when we are standing, maintaining the separation and the separated position. God has given us a separated position. We are the kings and the priests and the people of God. We are separated for a, for a special purpose. I mean, so remember the, the ELC, Eternal Life Church of God, we are a separated group. And we as the Christians, we as the believers, we have many things to do. And God has planned many plans about our church to do many things in the world. And we have to propagate that. And we have to proclaim the gospel towards the other people, those who are unreached. So remember, we are a separated people. We are a separated group. Okay, The church, the New Testament church is a separated group for a special purpose. Amen? So I would, like to, I would like to conclude our class today with, uh, with reminding uh, uh, many things about what is happening these days and what happened in the time of early church and what is going to happen in future during the time of great tribulation. You no, know, there are many things already happened and there are many things which is happening now and there are many things which is going to happen in the future, maybe after the second coming of Jesus during the time of great tribulation, which is written mainly in, I mean, in chapters 17 and 18 of Book of Revelation. You know, the Babylonian system of false religion has been a part of history since Nimrod. You know, when Nimrod was founding the, or putting the foundation for the, for the Babylonian empire, when in, in history we understand that that system is there, the Babylonian system is there. You will get an idea about the Babylonian system when you are reading that 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 ch chapters, two chapters. No, it is Satan's counterfeit of God's truth. 
because he knows that everything that God is doing is very correct and everything that God is doing is, I mean, getting victory over all the powers of this world. Understanding that, and he is trying, Antichrist is trying to make a counterfeit, make a counterfeit God for God's truth. God's word is truth, but Satan is trying to make another truth and trying to uh, convince the people. And he says that okay, this is true. And the, through this, you are getting the victory. You know, the Babylonians practiced the worship of mother and the child. So the Babylonians were practicing the worship of mother and the child. And even they believed in the death and the resurrection of that son. I, I told you, Tammuz. Okay? They were believing in the mother and the child. And they believed the death and the resurrection of that son. Even today also, the same thing is happening. In, in many of the many of the nominal churches. We should be very careful about all those things. You know, many of the nominal churches, are, they, they are following the same system of Babylon today. Same system, same religious system of Babylon today. You know, the Babylonian system is prevailing in many of the churches today. The apostasy is happening. What is the meaning of apostasy? Apostasy means uh, backsliders, the backsliding system. Apostasy it means many people are going away from the churches and many people are going away from the faith in Jesus Christ. They are mingling with the worldly systems. They are minimizing the doctrinal truth, minimizing the doctrinal truth. They are rejecting the authority of the word and they are trying to unite together with the politics. So this is the main point, main problem which is happening uh, in our churches today to defeat the Christian freedom of the churches. You know, what is happening? The people, the religious leaders are mingling with the, the worldly system. Okay? And they, the, the, the religious leaders are minimizing the doctrinal truth. There is a doctrinal truth in the Bible, but the, the religious leaders are, I mean, uh, are minimizing the doctrinal truth and they are rejecting the authority of the word and they are saying that, okay, we the leaders have the authority and whatever we say, you have to obey. You know, this will not happen. This will not, I mean, work out in the churches today. You know, the Christian churches, we are standing for Jesus Christ and we are standing for the word of God. I mean, we are not standing for any of the, any of the person of this world. We are not looking unto a political leader. We are not looking into a religious leader, but we are, we are always looking, I mean, our, our author and finisher of, G, I mean, of faith, that is Jesus Christ. I mean, we cannot reject the authority of the word. And we are trusting in the word. We are trusting in the Lord. And we are not trying to be united together with the, with the politics because we are a separated group of people. Amen. Same thing will happen during the time of the Great Tribulation also regarding the Babylon. Same thing is going to happen. Now, that's the reason Apostle Paul and other apostles have given many warnings against all these apostasy in Bible. You know, when you read Bible, you will understand Apostle Paul and many other people, many of the apostles are giving many warnings against all these things. That means when many things will happen during the time of, during the end time, the end time will come. Many people, many believers will be getting apostasy. They will be, what is that? Vishwasa Tyagam Sampuvikim. Vishwasa Tyagam Sampuvikim, apostasy. So many people will Will, will be falling away from the faith. They will go to, uh, the, go to the other religions and they will, uh, uh, they will try to follow the other religious systems and uh, the worldly pleasures. In Bible, there are many things which is written, I mean, specifically. No, we need to have spiritual discernment to know the false religion and false teachings and false prophecies. I mean, it was false great concern. It was false great concern about the about the local churches he founded that he says that not to be seduced away from their sincere devotion to Christ in second second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 1 to 4 let us read that portion and we will conclude the class of today second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 1 to 4 I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness do bear with me for I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband 
to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I'm afraid that as a serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if one receive, or if you receive a different spirit from one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you received accepted, you put you put you put up with a read with it readily enough. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's a, you know, Apostle Paul says in chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, um, um, uh, verse 3 says that, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Devotion to Christ. We are devoted to Christ. We are devoted to Christ. You know, what is happening? The, the, the Satan is trying to deceive the believers. The Satan is trying to deceive the believers with many things. And again, you know, it says that when for if one comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. So let us think about that. You know, we have a fundamental doctrine and we have, I mean, the clearly, I mean, written, I mean, mentioned I mean, Bible and the word of God and the doctrines of the Bible, the fundamental doctrines of the Bible in the Bible. You know, Paul is concerned about the local churches, which he founded and saying that, I mean, they are not to be seduced away from their sincere devotion to Christ. Amen. Let us not abandon the fundamentals of the faith, but let us remain true to God, true to the Lord, be faithfully serve the Lord without expecting a name or fame or wealth or pleasures of this world. Hallelujah. So this morning, this evening, let us all commit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. We have been discussing many things about, about the Babylon and the Babylonian system. 